Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're all doing excellent. I know I'm doing excellent because we are getting so, so close to finally firing up this 13B in our FC project. So, <clears throat> this little guy right here is a big piece of the puzzle. If you remember in the last video, I was talking about how I was having trouble with a fitting we got sent with our turbo kit. And this little fitting right here should be able to change the angle that we need to hook up our coolant return line from our turbo so that I can get this turbo back on the engine, get everything buttoned up, and finally ready to fire. Okay guys, so the turbo is leaned off the engine a little bit, um, but basically what was happening is this fitting right here had a curly cue that tried to come around in front of this lower radiator hose to the water pump to connect with this line. And that was not working because I couldn't clearance this to get everything on and it wasn't fitting quite right. So I'm going to put this fitting on right here that I just got and then we can just bring it down around and up and it'd be a much better shoot. So let me put that on and I'll show you the way it looks when we get it all buttoned back up. Okay guys, so here it is. There's our new fitting there pointing straight down. And now this cooler return hose comes off the water pump here. It loops down underneath this oil return line and then goes straight up into our barb fitting with a hose clamp on it. So that should take care of it. Now I have enough clearance to get a hose clamp around the lower radiator hose and we're back in business so we can keep buttoning things up and get this baby ready to fire. Okay guys, so I ran out to get some parts, a little thermostat, a new thermostat and a few things just because I want to keep working. Obviously it's dark out now, I've got my shop light over here. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to tell you a quick, quick story um, about this car. A lot of you don't know, but I got this car when I was 19, uh, straight out of high school. I was really into the drifting scene and uh, I spent a lot of time working on it and I left, let it sit for a long time. Um, obviously, we've been doing a lot of work on it. We're really dedicated to getting her back up and running, and it's been a really fun project. But I was starting to work out here at night. I thought, oh, I'll do some work and not film it. Um, but I'm going to do a little time lapse, um, just get things caught up, because I think we can get it really started in the morning uh, or at some point tomorrow. But basically, uh, I drove it around stock for a long time. When I started wanting to work on it when I was younger, um, my parents, of course, were not super into me having a uh, souped-up sports car and being that young. That's because they're good parents, and they have good reason to, of course, be nervous about that. But anyway, <clears throat> at one point, I was doing good in school, and my parents let me use the garage, and I actually redid the whole uh, suspension on the car. Got uh, struts and springs and polyurethane bushings, dropped the front and rear subframe, pressed all the bushings in. Each night, I would come home from work. I would immediately change my clothes, get down in the garage, and I would just wrench and wrench for hours. And um, just listening to the replay of a local radio show in the morning, and being out here at night, being this close, I'm just getting that really nostalgic feeling, and I gotta say, I'm very, very excited. So I'm gonna put you guys up in the time lapse uh, while I put some more stuff on the car, upper intake manifold, downpipe, miscellaneous things, check a few more connections, and then hopefully I'll get enough rest tonight and We'll get back at it tomorrow and hopefully we can get this thing to fire. So stay with me. Right, guys it's the next morning I am well rested and ready to get started uh, first thing I'm gonna work on right now is just plumbing all the vacuum lines that we need we need to get a vacuum line to the fuel pressure regulator to the blow-off valve and to the map sensor <clears throat> and then I'm gonna touch up the other vacuum lines make sure that the caps I have on the old emissions equipment vacuum lines are all nice and tight
Okay, so we got all the vacuum lines plumbed, which is great, and they're zip tied on for a little extra grip. Um, now, since Jeff is still here before he goes to school, we're gonna, he's gonna help me put the fuel tank back in and get the downpipe on so that uh, we can get this baby started up. Do it! So we got the fuel tank in, and now Thomas has climbed inside the car, rehooking everything back up. Yep, and we also, I also uh, got underneath there and torqued down the drive shaft, which is a very critical part of having a working car and needed to get that done. So we're on our way. All right, fall finished back here. So now we are going to move to the downpipe? Downpipe. Downpipe. Since you're dressed for school, I'll get underneath, but I want to jack up the front. Got the downpipe in. It's a V-band, so we got it on the back side of the turbo right here. It's done. Alright, so Billy's climbing through the car right here. He's hooking up the battery. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to just see if the motor will actually just crank. If the starter motor is hooked up correctly, if it's getting power, just to see if that's working. Because if that's not working, then the car is not starting. Could something still be unplugged underneath the dash? Yeah, certainly. But I don't know what. And I don't have enough room to work over here unless I get the car up and move it. But here's the thing. There is a way to just check the starter and then I could also wire up that push button. Just jump it? Yep. Okay, let me get out of here. Grace. But it's not doing anything. Starter ain't doing Beep! Um, maybe we need a new starter. Could be. Great, we get to pull this out now. Well, at least it's easy. Yeah. Can you just hand me the tools while I'm down here? Yep, what do you need? Um, I'm guessing a 14 and maybe a 17. Did you have a baby? I'm not doing ab exercises. Take this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the Bendex in here. Yeah, that Bendex is really hard to move. Starter wasn't doing when we were down there jumping it, so maybe we can jump it up here. I don't know. Now we got to see if there's even a replacement one around town. I'm sure there will be. Hopefully, there's more than one model that uses this. Yeah, it just locked Nothing. up. So, uh, we ordered a starter. It'll be here today, thank goodness, because I'm still wanting to get this baby started today. So, I'm going to... Jeff's going to leave for school pretty soon. So, I'm going to go ahead and start plumbing in the intercooler piping. Pop start it! <laughs> You're nonsense. Okay. And, uh, yeah, just get the... Intercooler piping in there, then I got a thermostat coming in today, so we'll be able to plug up the cooling system. Yeah, we'll take it from there. Alright, so the intercooler piping is on. That's looking great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get the boost controller hooked up. So I have a pigtail for that and I need to get it pinned out to the Haltech connection. So here's our little pigtail right here. Uh, both wires are the same color, which I'm hoping means just when you have a completed circuit it pulls the uh, wastegate open. But anyway, I'm going to get this pinned out and connected to the Haltech harness. Okay, so got the boost controller pinned out right there, and that's one more thing off of our to-do list before Jeff heads to school. Why don't you give us a quick update? All right, so we torqued down the drive shaft. Yep. Let me recross that. Um, install fuel tank done. 
Uh, brake lines and rotors have been done. Flock, nope. Check starter, that's in the progress right now, so leave that there. Yep. Install down pipe, done. Um, bead roll and install intercooler piping is done. Yep. And connect boost controller is done. And we're still in the progress of finishing up how we're going to mount the throttle cable, right? Even though it's connected, yeah, we it, still have to make sure it's... It opens the throttle body right now. Well, that's what I meant to tell you is I ordered a part last night. I ordered a strut tower brace. And the main cool. reason I did is because this can zip tie to the strut tower brace and it'll be mounted up correctly. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. We can even make like a little thing that like a little tube they can run through too. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do for the FC because of that weird throttle cable. So Yeah, we could totally and I could just like tack it on there and then yeah. it'll be clean. But yeah, so we got one, two, three, four, five. Alternator spacer that's done too, right? Yep. Alternator spacer is done as well. So we have four things. And this list is to get it moving, but to get it started, we're pretty much there. We just need the starter. Yep. Oh, and you need to plug the oil pressure hole. Otherwise, there's going to be a big problem. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, guys. So I am about done with everything that I can do until I run out for some errands and to the auto parts store. So, before that, I'm going to go ahead and get the Haltech programmed with the new base map that I was able to get directly from their support here in the West Coast Division and do any firmware updates I need to do so that when I get back, we can install the starter, get the fluids in the car, and then fire. All right, guys, I just got back, got my starter and my thermostat. So let's go ahead and test this starter. So what I need to do here is jumper this, ground it there, and this is the old one. And you'll see that it is not in fact broken because well, there's still a bit of a problem with this one. So it's a good thing I got a new one because it just keeps running. The new one. The new one here works much better. As soon as I jumper it, it engages and disengages. So, a little bit of a learning curve there, but we still got it figured out and hopefully this new one works better because there is definitely something wrong with this one. So, I'm going to go ahead and install it and then we'll give it a shot. Okay, so great news. Despite our blundering testing the starters, put the new one in, jumped it, and it tried to crank just for half a second, but it sounded much better. So now I'm not going to do anything else with that until I've got this thing full of oil. So I'm going to just start filling her with fluid. Well, first I'm going to put the thermostat in, then I'm going to fill her up with fluids, and we'll see what we can do. All right, guys, so I got a little bit of bad news. We're not going to be able to start the car today. Reason being is I do not have the stock oil pressure sender unit for this car. And that hole goes directly to the, uh, the oil system on the rear iron. So if I start filling with oil, it's just going to spray out of there and that's not going to work. So I have to get the correct type of fitting to plug that hole. It's not an easy uh, accessible fitting just from a local store. So I ordered one. It should be here tomorrow. It's a uh, BSPT, 1 8 BSPT, not NPT. So a little trouble with getting that in here, but it should be here tomorrow. We will start the car in this video. So I'll be back with you tomorrow when I get off of work. All right, guys, so it is the next day. I just got home from work. The sun's already starting to go down a little bit and my part is still not here. All I'm waiting for is a 1 8 BSPT adapter so I can plug the original oil center unit hole in the rear iron so that when I fill it with oil it doesn't spill everywhere. So it's coming though. Amazon says it'll be here by 9. It'll be dark by 9 but we will put the lights on and we will fire this. So right now I'm just doing a little wiring inside the car to make it a little more legit and safer when we fire up the Haltech and all the ignition system is on. And then I'm just going to start filling it with fluids, which I can, which is coolant and gas, because it is coming. Okay, guys, so I got this fuse panel wired up. 
It has a negative or ground post here to ground all your accessories and it has a power post here and you can put everything on a fuse. So now what I've done is obviously I'll mount this interior still not together but to turn on the Haltech I have a switch now because I was literally just jumpering it by jamming it into the positive battery terminal. It doesn't seem like a safe way to do it but now I can flip my switch. Haltech has power. So the sun is already going down. I know you guys can barely see me. Of course, I get a last minute notice from Amazon. Oh, your package is delayed. But I found a local AutoZone that should have what we need. So the drama continues, but we're headed out to try and get that right now. Okay, so I'm back from my expedition to finally get the missing little piece. Yep. You ready to see what it looks like? It's going to be the dinkiest thing. I'm going to be so disappointed that it took this long to get something. Exactly. Yep. Here it is. <clears throat> I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's it. Please let it be it. What's with the washer that just goes right over it? There's multiple washers in this pack. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and try and screw it in. Let's see if we can make this happen. Oh, it already feels better. Please thread, please thread. Thread, baby, thread. It's threading. <gasps> okay, it's not gonna crush that washer, uh -huh. <clears throat> but it's a tapered thread, so. Boom, okay, let's mock this up and plug that hole and then continue filling with the fluid. Okay, fluids are filled, no leaks, just a little bit we spilled of the coolant. Um, gas tank's full. Well, that's gas. Gas tank's got gas in it. Um, so now we're ready to go. I'm gonna grab my laptop so we can monitor the Haltech. And we still don't even know if the ignition is gonna work when we replace the starter. I didn't wanna mess with it too much, so I don't know if the ignition is gonna work. If that doesn't work, we're gonna wire in a push start. So still a lot to do, but we're out here where the nighttime warriors are going to get this baby. We're on that. All right, with my handy dandy flashlight here, I have to keep an eye on the motor here because Billy's doing acrobatic stuff in there, in case you can't see. He's coming over the, to the driver's side because we're actually going to prime the motor now. Uh, we do have the fuse pulled for the injectors and everything, so right now it's just to get oil into the system, oil into the turbocharger, and then just get ready. So he's going to hit it here real quick and try to crank it. Once he uh, gets situated in there. Hey, 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 get back. Back, back, out, 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 out. Go, 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 go. So unfortunately, plan A didn't work. Um, we still have to find out exactly what's wrong with the ignition connecting down to the um, starter. So what we're gonna do in the meantime is Thomas actually got a push start and we'll just hook that up temporarily and maybe even keep it permanent but just to see if we can start the motor right now and then when there's more daylight and everything we'll go ahead and chase all those electrical gremlins out because that's just a pain to do in this like how dark it is outside so let's go ahead and get that wired up real quick and we'll be right back all right boys now it's time for attempt number two what we did is we just temporarily just ran the wire eh, i mean we'll run it better to a push start um, instead of actually waiting for the key to turn, like like I said, we'll take care of that when there's more light. But now, theoretically, if he pushes that button, it should turn over. Do you still need the clutch pushed in? 
Do you think? No. No? Yeah. So let's go look. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm super nervous. Dude, that's really compression! Do it, do it again, do it again! Start is working! Dude, it's... The, the turbo isn't really turning from any of the, uh... Because I don't think it's, uh, oils in it just yet. Alright, All right, so we primed in? the engine. Where'd yep, it go? it's one in the middle there. Jeff's putting in the ignition fuse. We got the, uh... Okay, I heard the solenoid, or the uh, relay for the ignition. Okay, hang on, I'm going to get in front of the car. But okay. um, remember, your kill switch is that other switch for the Helltech. Yep, it's right here. If something weird happens. Yep. And just keep an eye, I have you on the diagnostics page. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and give it a good crank over and see if we can start her. Okay, Jeff. Here, I'll leave you with the flashlight. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. So we're having a little bit of problem right now with getting fuel pressure to uh, the fuel rails and everything. Every single time we uh, prime the fuel pump and everything, it comes back reading uh, zero PSI. And so uh, what we're actually doing is we're checking it out. Um, we might have left the cap on, on like the fuel filter or something. So right now Thomas has jacked up the front end of the car. We're going to check all the... All the um, fittings and everything and make sure everything's free flowing because uh can't start a car without fuel pressure so that's where we're at right now so after about an hour of trying to f uh, find the problem we pretty much traced the source all the way back to the fuel pump itself um so we checked all the lines and everything and they're all dry and then we pulled it out and it just seems like it was making noise. So Thomas back here has the fuel pump submerged in some water and we're gonna run a test to see if it's still good or not because that could be the issue right there, which would, we should need to get a new one and uh, then we'll be cooking with gas. And there we have it. We have run power, you can hear it, and nothing's coming out. That's the issue right there fuel pump is no bueno toasted yep and so there goes the we're starting it tonight because we got to order a fuel pump for the second night in a row yep Right, well we got a new fuel pump and we made a promise to you guys we're starting it in this video so even though it's two days later I'm gonna go ahead and get this fuel pump installed into the fuel hanger assembly and then try again to fire so let's get this in here all right so we got our new fuel pump in here looks nice connected all nice we even redid the positive and ground connections with some new connectors so let's get this in here and then try again Okay, so here we go, attempt number 457 to start the RX-7. So when I turn on the Haltech, I already did it once off camera and it definitely sounded different when it primed. So 
Oh yeah. Now before we hit the start button, we have to make sure everything's correct. Sandals, yep. good. And a hose, just in case something goes catastrophically wrong. Yep. All right, so you got your finger on the button? No, not yet. I gotta connect the ECU here and then uh, I, want, I want to check for fuel pressure because now that if it's primed right, it should be reading something for fuel pressure even though that we're not cranking the engine, so. Okay, it's reading settings. Agnostic. It has 10.4 fuel pressure, which isn't great. But it's better than zero, which we had before. Yeah, and it's dropping right now, so. I don't know what that means, but. Could okay. it be the air in the system needs First to of all, we still need to prime the engine, so I gotta pull these again. So, I'm give her some crankings. Fuel pressure jumped up, 94 PSI. Oil pressure climbing. So during that prime, we found we had just one little fuel leak. It was coming out of the actual pressure, pressure sensor right here, coming out of here. It was just a little bit too loose. We gave it a couple spins and now it's tightened down. Now, Billy here is plugging those relays back in because we're actually going to try and start it. All relays engaged. Yep, I heard the uh, coil packs make some power noises. Okay. Ready? Yep, let me get up here. Oh my God, here we go. Alright, hit her. Ooh, that was a big backfire. Scared. making different sounds and smells from the downpipe. Okay, so we figure we've sufficiently flooded the engine since we started to start it before timing it. So we pulled all the spark plugs and we're going to let it breathe. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, we're kind of stumped at this point. We know we have fuel, we know we have spark, we know we have compression. We set the timing the best way we know how, and we still don't have what we're looking for, which is an engine starting. Okay. So we were losing battery power, so we got a jumper box. So hopefully that gives us enough power. Now we got to reprime. Go again. I will go throw our pressure. Good, okay. Fuses back in, or relays rather. Now we also reset the timing. So hopefully that is correct now for the second time. Give her a go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yes, it is. That is so loud in here. Well, we don't have exhaust on there yet, but we don't. that it it just ran. We found timing. Yeah. So I needed to give it throttle to do that. Mm -hmm. um, did you check the map sensor? What it was saying? No, I didn't check here. Let me check here. God damn it! We can do it again.
Well guys, as promised, we got it started. Now the trick is gonna be fiddling with stuff and keeping it running, because right now we cannot get that figured out. But um, still buttoned down a lot of problems and made a lot of progress. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a long one. You know what to do. Please remember, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.